Greetings everybody. This video demonstration is how to create a WebEx session using Moodle. Now some of the things I want to talk about in this uh, demonstration is that you can create as many WebEx sessions as you want in your Moodle course and you can conduct and even record your WebEx sessions with or without the students logged in at the same time as you. So WebEx is meant to be a synchronous tool where the students and you log in both at the same time. But given our situation, if you want to make a WebEx recording without the students live and interacting with you while you're recording it, you don't have to. You can lecture to an audience of zero with your WebEx uh, session and record it. So I'm going to be walking you through how to create the uh, session as well as how your students would log in if you wanted them to come in at the same time as you as well as like setting up your microphone, sharing your screen, recording it, um, and the basic functionality of WebEx. So let's get started. To add a WebEx link to your course, you add it as an activity, similar to how you would add an assignment or a quiz. To do this, you'd first turn the editing on. Once the editing is turned on, Navigate to the week that you want to have the WebEx meeting and click Add an Activity or Resource. Scroll down to the bottom and click on WebEx Meeting. Click the Add button. The meeting name is the link that the students see on your course page. I usually begin with the word WebEx Meeting. Below the description box, you can choose a start time and your expected duration. If you go over the expected duration, WebEx will not kick you out. It's just kind of an estimate of how long the session will be. Once you're finished, you can click Save and Return to Course. Creating a WebEx link is as simple as that. You might want to send an announcements forum message to your students just reiterating that you plan on meeting them live and in person um, over WebEx. So you'll be teaching remotely and they will be learning remotely live and in real time. When it comes time to join the meeting and teachers can go in 15 minutes before the session starts, you would simply click on the link and teachers host the meeting. So a teacher needs to be present while the meeting is going on. In other words, you can't just add this WebEx link and let the students join the meeting with each other. Somebody has to host it and the teachers are the only role that can host it. So the teachers will host the meeting, the students will only see the link to join the meeting. So the students will click on the join meeting link. Now if you have a guest speaker or an expert from another university or anybody that you want to attend this WebEx meeting who does not uh, have access to this course, you can click on Get External Participant link. You can copy this information and email it to anybody that needs to attend the WebEx session. Again, this is for people who don't have uh, access to this course maybe they don't even have an Oakland U University email address. You give them that link and you give them the password and they will be able to access your WebEx meeting. To show you what this looks like, I'm going to click host meeting. The first thing WebEx is going to want you to do is select your proper speakers and you can test it to make sure your speakers are working. The other thing that it'll want you to select is your proper microphone and I can tell that this is not the right microphone I want to use. In fact, my microphone is not even moving when I use this. So I'm going to drop down and select my webcam microphone. Now you can see this is going back and forth and it's working just fine. I will click OK. I can close this volume pop-up window here. I can close that no problem. 
And if I wanted my students to come in, I'm just waiting for these attendees to show up. So once my students start rolling in, they'll show up underneath the attendees list. A couple of things I want to do while I'm waiting for that is I want to select mute on entry. That will ensure that when the students come in, there's not barking dogs or slamming doors or um, babies crying, things that they might not be aware of while their microphone's turned on. One of the things I like to do is click on the participant menu and select mute on entry. That'll ensure that the students' microphones are not turned on unsuspectingly when they've got their dogs barking, babies crying, or door slamming. Um, when everybody that's not talking has their microphones muted, it allows for a much better experience in WebEx. And if at any time you hear this really bad feedback loop or something like that, you can click mute all and it'll mute everyone's microphones and get rid of that really bad howling. A lot of times what happens when people put their microphones right next to their speakers, it'll create this really bad feedback loop. Another thing I like to do is assign privileges and I just give all attendee privileges. Uh, I just check that so if I want students to use the chat menu, which is in the lower right hand corner, they can type to anybody. Once you have students that are here and you want to start the session, I like to record every single session. In the upper right hand corner, there's a recorder button. And that brings up a recorder in the lower right hand corner. Once I click on that circle, then I'm recording the session. So I can see right now I'm recording and I'm ready to start my lecture. There's some cool interactivity that you can do with your students. You can ask them yes or no questions and they can click on the green check mark or they can click on the red X to say yes or no. And you can tell how many people said yes or no by clicking on this megaphone. The little eraser right here will clear those decisions. You can also tell your students if they have a question that they can raise their hand and WebEx will actually number each raised hand in the order at which they were raising their hand. So there's some cool interactivity there. There's a big button in the middle that says share my desktop and share my desktop is something that's very common especially when you want to show them something like Moodle you can give them a demonstration in Moodle. You can take them to any other website. Or if I minimize, I can show them anything that's on my computer screen. Like if I wanted to pull up a PowerPoint and lecture over a PowerPoint, for example. When I move my mouse to the very top of the screen, a menu will show up. Now, I can stop sharing, or I can open up the chat to see if any of my students have questions. Or I can even allow at any time my students to annotate. Now annotate is a really cool feature because it allows people to scribble over my desktop or point to something. Um, they can type. Uh, there's even an arrow which allows each student to have their name on an arrow so I can say point to where the syllabus is on my desktop and everybody can you know, use this arrow to point to where my syllabus file is on my desktop. As the teacher, I can use the eraser to erase all the annotations to make this a clear, uh, a clear sheet again. So the annotation is really cool. If you don't want to annotate over your desktop or over a PowerPoint slide or anything, if you stop sharing, you can pull up a whiteboard. So the share menu in the upper left hand corner has the ability to share a whiteboard and that same functionality where people can scribble over things uh, happens again. Uh, one of the other really great things about WebEx is that you can open things like images. If I go File, Open, and Share, from my desktop I can open up, here's a little map of Michigan. When I open that up, we can have students annotate over this. I might choose a red color here. So if I wanted the students to circle Oakland County, you'd find a bunch of people circling Oakland County like this. Or if you wanted them to point to where Traverse City is, you can have them point to it. 
So there is some interactivity that you can do with WebEx that makes it really fun. There's another way you can use WebEx for group presentations. And this might be something where only the group presenters show up to WebEx all at the same time. You host the meeting, you would record it, and the students would present on their projects. To do that, one of the people in that student group would need the ball. So if you see right next to my name, there's a ball, and I can drag that down next to one of the students' names, and then that student would be able to share their desktop. In this case, you'd be recording a group presentation where one of the students shares the PowerPoint, and then the other students would unmute their microphones and talk over those slides. Once the session is over, you can hit the stop button on the recorder, stop recording, and when you close out of WebEx, it kicks everyone out of the session. So it'll end the session for everyone. Back in Moodle, this same link that we have here would no longer be a host meeting or join meeting link. This will eventually disappear and turn into a play button. I can show you what that looks like in another one of my courses. It does take a few moments for it to uh, encode, so I, it's not an instantaneous thing. Here's one of the sessions that is finished. So you can see this is a WebEx meeting. There's no longer a link to join or to host, but there is a play button here. So if someone wasn't able to make your lecture session live, or if it was a group presentation where only the group presenters were in the recording, um, this link could be used to play what was recorded. This is being recorded now, so anybody that wasn't able to make it can at least go back and watch the video. And I can fast forward, so I can, I can go through the entire thing. I'm playing it much like a video. So this is what the recordings look like. So like I said before, there's a lot of cool things you can do with WebEx. You can make as many of the meetings as you like. And WebEx will work on your students' machines or even your machines as long as you've got a Windows PC or a Mac. Unfortunately, it does not work with Linux or Chromebooks. So um, if you have a Chromebook or a Linux machine, this will not run. But if you have a mobile device like an Android device or a... Uh, or uh, an iPhone, it should work on those mobile devices.